Now let's look at the thread safe singleton. So in the previous session, we discussed about the lazy initialization and we also discussed that the lazy initialization method has one problem that it doesn't support multi-threaded applications. So how can we fix that? So here is a thread safe singleton implementation. So as you could see, the implementation is exactly the same. The only difference is the synchronized keyword. So when we put synchronized keyword through one of the methods, it will make sure that this method is called in an atomic way by each of these threads. So this synchronized keyword will make sure that multiple threads doesn't get different instance of this class. It will make sure that multiple threads never execute this method at the same time. Next we have the static block initialization method. The static block singleton initialization method is very similar to the eager initialization method. So in this case, the instance of the class is created in a static block within the class. So the only advantage here is that it provides an option for exception handling. Both eager initialization and static block initialization creates the instance even before it's being used and that's not the best practice to use. Here is an example of static block initialization. So here we could see that there is a static block introduced and then a try catch block and within that we are instantiating the object. So the advantage here is that we could bring in a try catch block within this static block. But performance wise this is very similar to the eager initialization method. So in this method as well when this class is loaded this instance will be created. Rest of the things are same. We have a private constructor, this is the private instance and then we have the method which will return the instance. Next we have enum singleton method. So in this method, we'll use the java enum class to create a singleton class. Before looking at the implementation, let's try to understand why we need enum singleton. As you might be already knowing, Java reflection is a very powerful feature provided by Java, but it has its own disadvantages as well. In case if your project uses reflection to create objects, so you should be thinking twice or you need to verify whether any of the above approaches are broken by the usage of reflection. Also, you need to keep in mind that there are many Java framework, for example, like Spring or Hibernate, which uses reflection. So here is an example to demonstrate how reflection could spoil a singleton class. So in this example, we are using the eager initialization singleton method, the class which we created earlier. This one. So in this test, we are creating one instance of eager init singleton class by use by calling the get instance method. And in case of second object, we are using reflection to create the instance. So within this try catch block, we are creating a constructor type and getting the declared constructors of the eager init singleton class. And using this constructor object, we are setting the accessibility of the constructor to true. And then here we are able to call the constructor dot new instance. So this will again create an instance of the eager init singleton class. So now we are going to print the hash code of both these object. If the hash code of both these object are same, then our singleton works. If it is not same, that means it's two different objects and then the singleton doesn't work. So let's go ahead and run it. So here you could see that the hash code of both these objects are different. That means the eager init singleton class doesn't work as a singleton class. So this demonstrate how reflection could spoil a singleton class. So in order to mitigate this problem in Java, we could use the enum class to create a singleton class. To mitigate this situation with reflection, Joshua Bloch suggests the use of enum to implement singleton design pattern. The enum class in Java ensures that any enum value is instantiated only once in a Java program. Java enum values are also globally accessible. But the drawback of this approach is that the enum class 
is somewhat inflexible. For example, it does not allow lazy initialization. So here is a simple example of enum singleton. So as you could see, enum keyword is used to declare this enum singleton. And since enum takes care of most of the implementation, we don't need to do anything special here. You can write the code logic under the do something method. The enum implementation within Java will take care of the singleton features. The only thing which you need to keep in mind that this has many drawbacks like you cannot implement lazy initialization or you cannot extend it with any other class etc. So far we have covered five types of singleton implementation in Java. Each programming language will have their own method of doing this. But the basic idea behind this is to have only a single object instance of the class. For example, in case of Kotlin, we could use the object keyword to create the singleton. So in Kotlin, it's very easy to create a singleton object. So you just need to define the class with the object keyword. The object class can have functions, properties and init methods. The constructor method is not allowed in an object. So you can use the init method to do that. The object get instantiated when it is used for the first time. So in case of Kotlin, it's pretty straightforward and you just need to use the object and Kotlin will take care of the rest.